know how Pixel ranked letters by how easily you can capitalize them? Well, spoiler alert, he only did it for the English alphabet. What about, you know, any of the others, like the Greek alphabet? The Greek alphabet. Just a little disclaimer, before you watch this video, I highly recommend you go watch Pixel's video. It's a perfect introduction to the premise of ranking letters by how easily you can capitalize them. Yeah, go check that out. It's linked in the description. It's pretty obviously easy to search up on YouTube. Just go see Pixel. Pixel, if you're watching this, um... You're welcome for the free advertising. One more thing, just like Pixel, we're gonna be starting with the easiest letters to capitalize and working our way down to the Hellspawn letters that are impossible to capitalize because, you know, why not? So that brings us to the easiest letter in the Greek alphabet to capitalize at spot number one, IOTA, because if you write your capital the correct way, no, that's a bad example. If you write your capital the correct way, then it covers it up pretty well. And even if you do it the incorrect way, it's it still covers it up pretty nicely. So we can accommodate for demons. Spot number two goes to new because also pretty easy to cover up. It can get a little hard if you write your lowercase more like that, like a lowercase v from English. But technically this side is supposed to be like more vertical, so it, it still works out pretty well. Spot number three gives us Epsilon, and this is the first example of an issue that is very prevalent in this list with Greek letters. Because a lot of Greek letters, their capital versions are nice sharp edges and lines, it's all very linear and nothing too fancy, but the lowercase versions are all curvy, almost like they come from cursive. Ugh. So it's pretty hard to try and cover them up with the straight line versions, but you know, at least in this case, all things considered, it's not that bad. I mean, sure you have this little thingy down here, but like, that's barely anything. It still looks very much like a capital Epsilon, so yeah, that's that's it. Spot number four goes to Eta, which is kind of just like H from English, except Eta has this little thing sticking out the bottom, so you kind of got a remnant from the from the lowercase version, but, you know, it's still, again, it still looks like a capital A, it just, you know, if someone does like this, that's not that big of a, that's not that big of a deal, you know, I'm sure somebody's done something like that when writing a capital H or a capital A before, because, you know, writing's hard, so, you know, this is, this is pretty excusable. Spot number five goes to Tau, which is pretty much just like T from English, Except in English, we have our letter F, and this T kind of looks like a double-sided F. However, Greek does not have a symbol that looks like an English F. We'll get to their F counterpart in a bit. But what that means is that this does not look like a double-sided F. It just looks like an uppercase tau with a line through it. Spot number six goes to Kappa, which is kind of just like K from English. Except you do need to add on this upper thing, because K from English has the spines. So you only need to add on you know, that little part there. But Kappa has its back shrunk as well, so you need to add on that as well, so there's a tiny bit more room for error, but, you know, aside from that, it's just K from English. Just K from English. Spot number seven goes to Sigma, but only one form of it. Please don't make a brain rot joke. Because lowercase Sigma actually has two forms. This one goes, you know, in the middle of letters. This one goes at the end exclusively. Don't ask me why that's how they did it, that's just how they did it. So spot number seven goes to this form of lowercase sigma. If you try to capitalize it, it's not that, it's not that bad. If you can cover up the curves well enough, then all you have is just this part sticking out here and this part here. It just looks a little too fancy to be capital, but you know, it's, it gets the job done. Like for example, let's say I'm trying to write polis uppercase, but I mess up on the sigma because you know, we all do. So if I try to capitalize it, it, it doesn't look that bad, right? Right? Who knows, maybe I'm the world's biggest idiot. Spot number eight goes to Zeta. And... <sighs> I mean, you can, you can trace it pretty well, but it just looks so messy. Like, that's really ugly. It's better than everything that comes before it, but it's really not that good. 
which does not bode well for the rest of this video. Spot number nine goes to everyone's favorite from math, pi. You have two options for this. Option one is just to write an uppercase pi over it, which is very, very not good. But since it shares the legs, you can kind of just do a skinny uppercase pi, which it just looks like a skinny uppercase pi with a tilde through it. It's not that great, but again, just like Zeta, it's better than everything that comes before it, so what are you gonna do? Spot number 10 goes to beta, and you know, you kind of have like all the uppercase there for you. It's just, you know, it might be a little hard to trace, but the biggest thing is that it still has this little part sticking down below it. And so it still looks lowercase, which kind of defeats the point of capitalization. With Ada, it wasn't that big of a problem since, you know, you might accidentally write an Ada like this if you're being careless. But for Beta, the lowercase form's biggest distinct, biggest distincting, jeez. But for Beta, the lowercase form's biggest distincting feature is this little thing down here. So if you write it like this, it still kind of looks lowercase. So. You know, it's like, what's the point of even capitalizing it if you can't really make it look capital? Spot 11 goes to mu, which it's, you know, in a way similar to M from English. You got these spaces here. With mu, it's harder to make it work. And you also got this little tail thing. Spot number 12 goes to lambda. And, you know, this one isn't actually that bad on its own. It looks pretty capital. I mean, you got this little thing here, but it's not, again, it, all things considered, not that bad. But again, let's say I'm trying to write polis all uppercase, and, you know, I mess out on the lambda because, wait, mess out? What the? But I mess up on the lambda because, you know, we all do. So if I want to capitalize it, I have to be really careful not to obtrude on this omega here. So. That's why it's actually as low as it is, because again, on its own, it's not that bad, but it sticks far out to the left when you have to capitalize it, so it could get in the way of other letters. In a way, it's kind of similar to L from English, because that on its own is not that bad at all, but if it's already next to some other letters, you have to like make it under the letters, it's weird. So that's why Lambda is at spot number 12. I had to go and look at my script. In spot number 13, we have Theta. The downside to this one is you can't really get rid of the oval. The upside is a capital Theta, its line doesn't go all the way through it. So, you know, the line's already there. It's like all you need, already there. So, that's convenient. But again, you can't get rid of the oval, so it's really hard to try and disguise that. Spot number 14 goes to Ypsilon, or Ypsilon, if you want to be all ancient Greek about it. Originally, I actually had this at last place because it was kind of just like Y from English. You have to write a whole new one. There's nothing you can do. But then I realized the left side of a lowercase Ypsilon is supposed to be kind of straight. So you can kind of trace over that, but you're still going to have this tail thing. But it kind of looks capital, so yeah. Spot number 15 goes to Z. Who named these letters? And this is the most prevalent example of the problem of the curly lowercase letters, because look at this abomination. What I think happened is that a lowercase Z kind of used to look like this, but because people were like, you know, writing fast and all, it started to look a lot like this, and then the capital is just big and pronounced enough that it didn't get the same treatment. But now when you try to capitalize this, you can trace over it, but you still get a lot of remnants from the lowercase, so it's, it just looks really, really ugly. Spot number 16 goes to P, and all you can really do is just like trace over like this, and you just get the X from the TJ Maxx logo. Spot number 17 goes to the other variant of Sigma, because this one is far worse to cover up. You can only really cover up this bit and this bit, and the rest is sticking out. All, all around. And also, this kind of looks like Trump. Spot number 18 goes to Omega, because you can try and cover up the sides a bit, but you're still gonna have these bits, and then this all thing in the center. It looks like a, a cursive E. Gross. Spot number 19 goes to C, and while I appreciate the simplicity of having your lowercase letters just be the capitals, but they go below the line. It leads to weird amalgamations like this when you try to capitalize them. It's like, that looks terrifying. Spot number 20 goes to Omicron, and it's just O from English. Spot number 21 is Delta, and with this, you can't really 
cover much, and it's pretty obvious that there's a lowercase delta in there, so it's kind of a futile effort. It's kind of pointless. Spot number 22 goes to row, because this, it's, you know, it's kind of almost like Pixel's attempt to capitalize a B. But the worst part of this is that unless you make it, like, really obvious that it's a lowercase row that you tried to capitalize, it looks like a lowercase b. It... No, this isn't English, this is Greek. Unless you really, like, try and, you know, make it apparent that this is not a lowercase beta, it looks like a lowercase beta, and that could get confusing, which is really, really not good. You do not want letters to get confused with each other. That kind of defeats the entire purpose of having them be different. So the confusion is why Rho is as low as it is at spot number 22. Spot number 23 goes to Phi, and this, you know, jeez. It's even worse than Psi, because with Psi, you know, this at least looks like it could be its own symbol, albeit terrifying. But this is just a whole amalgamation of circles and the line through it, and it just, it's very unpleasant. Spot number 24, second to last place, goes to Alpha. Because believe it or not, you do not write it like a lowercase a, you write it like you're, uh, drawing a fish with a really stubby tail. So, I mean, at least with A, you, you could use the stem of it to help cover things up, and sure, you would end up with this circle down here. I'm not wording it like Pixel did. Just this bulbous sack underneath it. But with Alpha, it's even worse, because you don't have a stem to work off of. All you can really do is just try and disguise it with these curves, and you got a lot left over from, from the lowercase. But believe it or not, there's still one letter that's worse than that, and all the rest. Gamma. It's just like Y from English. You just have to write an uppercase gamma on top of it. So yeah, Iota's an angel from heaven, and Gamma is a demon sent straight from the depths of hell. I really don't know how to do outros. Um. Thank you for watching. Please never speak of any of this again.